Peace family, and welcome to the Reading and Writing in the Dark podcast. This is Ayapo Yapa, and I am the author of Melanin, a novel. On today's podcast, I want to talk about theoretical ebb and fiction. Right now, there's a term that is used for speculative fiction and science fiction that is written by Black authors, and it falls under the umbrella of Afrofuturism. I, for one, refuse to use the term Afrofuturism because Afrofuturism was coined by a white man named Mark Derry, and he, like, he actually wrote books about the subject and so on. My whole push, if you go to my website, ayapoyapa.com, is it, you, you'll find out that my whole push is that our stories will be told by our people, that we will control our own narrative, as opposed to white people constantly saying what our story is and talking about our our culture and what it's. Um, it's a ridiculous thing to me when I see that, and and uh, my wife doesn't really like for me to say this, but I just, this is just the way I feel. We're the only people who has other people constantly controlling their narrative, and when I say their, I mean our narrative. So I'm starting to see a slew of new black writers, new black talent out here, content creators, actors, actresses, musicians, uh, just people across all kinds of fields, disciplines, in education, everything. And we are presently fighting and have and a lot of a lot of them have been fighting for a while to take control of our own narrative. I want to, for my part, uh, through my writing, help to take control of our own narrative so that we present our people to our people the way that we are. Not as caricatures not as someone's impersonation of us or someone's idea of who we are and so on, but who we really are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so it's like with anything. When someone gives you a story, and it was my mother that told me this a long time ago. She said that when someone's telling you something and it has to do with someone else, they say, she said, they can only give you two things, their side of the story and their side of that other person's story. And that's what I'm trying to say is, it's time for our people to present our side of the story from us. Okay, so, uh, you know, at the risk of becoming redundant. Um, Now, about, I think it was last Saturday, I was watching a live stream on Black Power Media. Um, I like Black Power Media a lot. And they had a discussion about quote unquote, Afrofuturism or speculative fiction. And and those who were hosting the program were basically saying they felt the same way that I feel about, which is um, we prefer not to use the term Afrofuturism. But at the same time, there's like this void and, and we're kind of like, well, what do we call it? Um, and I kept pushing the suggestion, theoretical ebb and fiction. Now, I've been using the term for a couple years now. And I have it on my work, I have it on my site, and, and so on. Um, and on the <laughs> and on the, uh, the live stream, the, the host and the guest, they, you know, they, they joked about it a little bit, the way that it sounded. They said, well, it doesn't slip off the tongue. I, and they were like, you know, Ayapo, that's, that's not gonna, like, we don't think that's gonna catch on. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm making this is because I want it to catch on. I think it should catch on because in, in, in their defense, they were, I think they, they meant it, but at the same time, they were messing with me. And, um, and one of the gentlemen actually said, you know, you know, I, you know, we're, we're messing with you. Um, but if it's, if it's something other than what white people are giving us, then, you know, more power to you using it. I'm going to give a quick breakdown of how I arrived at calling what I write and what others write theoretical ebb and fiction. First off, you have the word theoretical. I'm reading some definitions here. It says concerning or involving the theory of a subject or area of study rather than its practical application. 
Okay, that opens it up to pretty much anything. Anything can be theoretical. When you're, if you're writing a drama, it can be theoretical. It doesn't have to be science fiction. It doesn't have to take place in the past or in the distant future or whatever. It can take place at once, at any time, because it's in theory. Now, that's why I chose theoretical. Eben, Eben, the definition of Eben is dark brown or black. Ebony. So, that's, I chose that for obvious reasons. Fiction. Literature in the form of prose, especially short stories and novels that describe imagery, I'm sorry, imaginary events and people. Okay, that's pretty straightforward too. Theoretical ebb and fiction. I personally can't think of anything better to call it. Um, and I definitely, like I said, not only do I not like the term Afro Afrofuturism because it was coined by a white man, but also I don't think that Afrofuturism is necessarily descriptive of what we write. We write all kinds of things as black people. And I have a, you know, I feel a way about Afro anything. You know, everybody doesn't have an Afro. I know it's not talking about a physical Afro necessarily, but I have an issue with like Afro anything because I, cause I feel like that actually came from white people. And then futurism, well, every story that black people write that's speculative or, th or, the or theoretical doesn't necessarily take place in the future. Some of it takes place in the past. Some of it takes place right now. Like I said, some of it actually may pertain to drama or mystery or a thriller or whatever. So theoretical ebb and fiction. That's what I, that's what I push right now. And I do say, cause my wife isn't really crazy about the term ebb either, but I, I myself will continue to push this until I, or someone else black comes up with something better. And if someone black comes up with something better, I'll start using that. But I really have this aversion to letting and having white people um, control our narrative or give us a narrative. They've been doing that for, for centuries. Uh, my wife and I was having a conversation this morning and we were just talking about language and the reasons that white people seek to control the language and control the way that we speak. Uh, like the, the term slaves. I do not use the term slave, uh, not when it's talking about our people. Now, in my writing for specific purposes and depending who's talking, to, depending on the character that's speaking, I'll use the term. But in my regular conversation, I don't use the, the term slave. I always say, enslaved Africans or people who were enslaved or our people who were enslaved. But I, I, I try never to say slaves. I try my best never to say it because slavery is to, to be a slave is a state is a state of being. You know, when they when I used to hear people say, oh, they went and got they went and got slaves from Africa. Uh, what are you talking about? They were they were born slaves in Africa. They were they, they're it's like bananas. They were just born and they just grow uh, by the bunch as slaves. They're just slaves. They get the F out of here. These, these people were not born slaves. Our people were never slaves. We were enslaved. And the reason that the word enslaved is so seldom used is because uh, when you're a slave, that puts the focus on you. That puts the impetus on you. When you're an enslaver, that puts the focus on the person who enslaved that person. It puts the impetus on the enslaver as opposed to the person they have enslaved. Okay, because as soon as you say, well, that person's enslaved. Well, really, who enslaved them? Or, so, But if you say that person's a slave, you tend to not think any further than that and just look at that person. Oh, he's a slave. And then they give themselves the term Master. Now, slave never has a positive connotation ever. At, at best, it's neutral. Like back in the day, uh, most people won't remember this, but uh, on a computer, you used to have what was called the master drive and you would have the slave drive. 
And if you had like more than one hard drive in your computer, you'd have a slave drive and then you call a second slave, a third slave, 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 or anything, a, a, a slave to the rhythm, a slave to my, my desires, the slave. And it always talks about something neutral at best and negative at worst. And that's what they want to saddle us with, saddle us with is calling us slaves or having us think of ourselves as slave or, or, uh, you know, whatever. But when you hear the term master, master never has a negative connotation. What do you call the golf tournament? The masters. Uh, what do you call it when you're the best at your craft? Oh, he's a master crafts, a, a master craftsman. What do you call something that controls something else? That's the slave, or, or that's the master, I'm sorry. And uh, just like they used to talk about the stove, I watched uh, a, a black woman and she was looking at a house and this white woman was showing her the house and she was like, well, this is the master oven and then underneath it is the slave. It doesn't get as warm. It doesn't cook as well. You know, all this crap. And they always seek to control the narrative. Now, they got hip to the fact that people were starting to get master, masters. And so they're, now they're saying planters, which is like this benign piece of crap, non-descriptive term. What? Planters? What do you mean? Like peanuts? Planters? These people, these people were enslaving terrorists is what they were. They were freaking terrorists and monsters. And now they want to change it and try to call them planters, right? And it's because, getting back to what I was talking about, about the language, is because they realize the power of language. They, can, they, they understand the, the power of terms and phrases. They understand the power of even if we have a term, they want it so that they're the one that created the term. Wakanda forever now every black person get ready in, in the known universe getting ready to try to watch the sequel to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. White man created the con created Wakanda. White man created Black Panther at Marvel. And we walking around, you know, putting our arms across our chest talking about Wakanda Forever. Stop. Please stop. Please. And I'm big comic book buff. I man, please stop. And finally, just uh, I'm kind of, as they say, throwing this in for free. I was listening to another live stream and it's talking about uh, black people and land. It said we once had 15 percent of land in the United States and then we lost all that land and we're down to like one percent or three percent, something like that. And I said the terminology is all effed up. We lost the land. We didn't lose Jack. It was stolen. It was stolen uh, from us. Anything we we're always and and you know this is this is no shade to people who said it or say it because I used to say it. I used to you know I and and, and I still say stuff because I speak English right. So I still say stuff, and my wife and I are constantly like catching each other saying different things and trying to adjust our terminology. We didn't lose. We didn't lose any land. If you lose something, then that puts the focus on you. That puts the impetus on you. You know, I kind of was joking when they said, you know, and, and we ended up losing all that land. I started patting my pockets and saying, no, doggone it. Where did I put that land? I, I, I just had it here a minute ago. That It was stolen. It was stolen on purpose with purpose. And they knew what they were doing and they stole it. So we didn't we didn't lose it. When you say the when you say you lost something, someone you know, like I said, the focus is on you as the person losing, you know, losing something or being careless or whatever. If you say someone stole something, the focus automatically shifts to the person who stole it. Not so many. I mean, there, there's always going to be those who say, "Well, you shouldn't let them steal it." Well, that's that's up for that's up for debate. Sometimes you can't stop a person from stealing something. You're you're on vacation or you're at work or when somebody busts in your house and steals all your stuff. Well, you shouldn't have let them steal. I didn't let them steal Jack. I, I had to go to work. I had to leave my house. 
You know, I don't, I don't have freaking agoraphobia. I have to leave my house. Okay, so anyway, or agoraphobia, agoraphobia, you know what I mean. But all of that said, that's why it's so important to me to come up with this, when I came up with this term and pushing this term hard. Right now, my my footprint or whatever whatever it's called on like social media or my my circle of influence or whatever isn't isn't very large but i'm asking anyone who hears this to not only visit my website sign up for the newsletter which is free and it will automatically give you a download of one of my stories moanesis the old tree which has gotten rave reviews. And uh, you can also pre, uh, pre-order Melanin there and see my other works. You know, I have the book of short stories, Paradigm Void, uh, my second novel, and one of the cargo, and uh, a no- novella called The Redemption of Maxine Allison, as, as, um, as well as other books there in the works. I'm more than halfway through uh, writing uh, paradigm uh, further jo- journeys into the paradigm boy the second collection of short stories so I'm out here working I'm working for our people because I love respect and honor our people and I want to I want to give our people something that we can read something we can see that is about us written by someone who loves honors and respects us because I do and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people like this. Ajali Shabazz, she just finished her, se- her her second novel. She has three books out, but this is her second novel. It's called This Black Nation. Her It's the sequel to her, uh, her, her book, This Black, which I suggest and everyone purchase and read. You can purchase it on Amazon or purchase it at a 25,000 year cycle. Um, and there you can purchase her her nonfiction book, which is one of uh, radiation remedies called Furnace of Affliction. And soon, it's not available yet, but very soon, within the next uh, few weeks here, it, um, this Black Nation will be available on that platform. But but well before that, it will be available on Amazon. So go and uh, go check that out. There are all kinds of our people out here writing works for our people, you know, that don't have us as buffoons or don't have us as caricatures and so on. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, controlling our own narrative. Uh, But for right now, theoretical ebb and fiction in terms of black sci-fi or black speculative fiction and in almost any other kind of fiction, almost, I guess, but especially when it comes to sci-fi and, and speculative fiction written by black people, theoretical ebb and fiction. No more of this Afrofuturism nonsense. Theoretical ebb and fiction. That's what I'm pushing. And, you know, and like the brother said, said Ayapa, it doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue. You know, we like stuff that rolls off the tongue. Well, uh, as I wrote in uh, in the article in the upcoming edition of Reading and Writing in the Dark, the newsletter, which is free if you sign up for it, um, I say, you know, no one says Kentucky Fried Chicken. People say KFC. You know, nobody says, um, I can't remember what the acronym is for, but it's like general uh, employees, insurance, blah, blah, blah. I said, people say Geico. You know, nobody says micro computer software they say microsoft you know so people are after a while once people know what theoretical ebb and fiction is they're either going to call it tef or they're just going to call it tef they're not going to you know nobody's walking around saying nobody said you know a few people say science fiction they say sci-fi so you know you you know you'll say you won't you'll say tef or like i said tef you know, everybody's not going to be running around talking about theoretical ebb and fiction. They'll just know that TEF or TEF stands for that. 
and those do roll off the tongue. And uh, they're made by a black man, which which is me. And it's not because I made it that I'm pushing it. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not like an attention whore at all. That's one of the reasons it's hard for me to promote stuff is because I I like to kind of be back in the scene. I don't like like feeling like I'm pushing myself on anybody or whatever. I just know that I want us to have our own stuff. And whatever I can do to help that come about, I'm going to do it. So from here on out, when someone, if you would, if you would, and if you agree with me, when you hear people use the term Afrofuturism, say, I have a better thing to say, to call it than that. We can call it theoretical evidence fiction, or we can call it TEF, or we can call it TEF. But we got to stop using these terms that are coined by white people to describe our stuff. Because that is just, in my opinion, another way that they leverage control over us. Is even if they give us something and it seems like it's ours or it seems like it's for us, like Black Panther. That's Disney making that money from it. That's not that that money's not going into the black community. That's money going out of the black community. You know, watching it and handing it over to Disney. And Disney is problematic itself. So go to my website, ayapoyapa.com, I Y A P O Y A P A dot com. And I guarantee you'll have a good time when you're there because it's a very robust site. There's a lot going on in there. My art and my cartooning is on it. Um, I laid out the entire site myself. Uh, I didn't pay anybody to do it. I, you know, I, I'm a graphic designer and, um, you know, and the cartoonist. And I have my music up there. Some people might like it. Some people might sound, sound, say it sounds like crap. I'm not trying to be a professional musician. Music is my hobby. So if you enjoy listening, you know, if you want to and want to give a listen and see what it sounds like, you might say, oh, it sounds like crap. Or you might say, oh, that's not that's not bad. So my music's on there. My art is on there. And especially my writing is on there. You can purchase, uh, you can pre-purchase Melanin, a novel through the site. The first book, there's all the books that are completed, um, which are Melanin, a novel, Paradigm Void. The Redemption of Maxine Allison and and What of the Cargo. If you go to each of their individual pages by clicking on the, you know, the cover, then you can read a synopsis of each one. And if you click on Melanin, it also has an excerpt from Melanin. It's actually chapter, the, the entirety of chapter two you can read online. Or you can download it and read it. Download it as a PDF and read it. So on the site, you can go there. You can connect to my Twitter. If you uh, j- j- just click, just click on the Twitter. It takes you to my Twitter page. And if you click and go further in there, then it'll actually take you on to Twitter uh, for my Twitter page. But my Twitter page is also within my site. And please do, if you're so inclined, follow me on Twitter. I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to get the word out about my work because my work is for black us. And I think that after you start reading it and after you, after you start seeing it and reading it, then you're going to see that I am very serious about loving our people. Um, so again, go to the site. There's, there are Easter eggs in the site. Um, I think uh, I think that's about it. Oh, you can you can click to well, you're already listening to the reading and writing in the dark podcast, so you've probably already gone to those links. And uh, that's it. And by all means, register for the newsletter, and that way you'll never miss another newsletter. The July issue is already up on there. The August issue will be out on August first. And I guess that's about it. I've said my piece. (laughs) So I just want to thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much because I know people's time is tight. And I just appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend a little bit of of it with me. So this is Ayapo Yapa signing off. If you're a reader, keep on reading. 
If you're a writer, keep on writing. And I'll talk to you again soon. Peace.